Hello viewers, it's been quite some time now that I am coming across various graphical posts or pictures on the internet which are trying to elaborate the functions of 1PL, 2PL, 3PL, 4PL and 5PL service providers. I will request my students and viewers to refrain from referring to these infographics on the internet since most of them are providing discrepant and misleading information. Today, I am going to try my level best to explain these terms to all my viewers and students so that they have a good grasp of the concept. What does PL stands for? The term PL stands for party logistics and number associated with it on the left side refers to the level of logistics outsourcing. Lower numbers refers to direct services or less intermediaries and the higher numbers imply more parties are being outsourced. At one end of the party logistics spectrum, we find 1PL, where the manufacturer does not outsource logistics and deliver its products directly to the end customer or retailer. At the other end of the spectrum, you will see 5PL, where a logistics operator manages a network of supply chains for the client. Now, before we dive into the actual discussion of 1PL, 2PL, 3PL and onwards, Let's get familiar with the definition of logistics. What is logistics? Logistics is an aspect of the supply chain that stores or delivers finished goods or services to the customer, whether that's a manufacturer, distributor or consumer. The goal of logistics is to deliver goods or services to the customer on time and at a competitive price. Many viewers might be wondering why companies or manufacturers outsource logistics function. Well, depending upon the nature of the business, some companies consider logistics to be a core competency while others don't. Actually, outsourcing lets a company to focus on its core competencies. There are several benefits of outsourcing functions like improved business focus, access to the latest technology, reduced cost and enhanced cash flow, and improved efficiency, velocity, flexibility, etc., etc. But on the other hand, there is a significant disadvantage of an outsourcing too, and that is loss of control. Anyway, as we move ahead with our discussion, your mind will automatically start making an association of term outsourcing with the functions 1PL, 2PL, 3PL and onwards. So let's start with 1PL. What is 1PL? I want my viewers to consider themselves a manufacturer before we start discussion. Now, I want to ask you a simple question. If you are producing or manufacturing something and you want to deliver your goods to your customer or a retailer, what will you do to get this job done? Answer is quite simple. You will need a transportation. You will need to employ a mode of transportation which can be a truck or any other vehicle to transport the goods to a customer or a retailer. When you do this task of delivery by using your own truck or own vehicle, you call it a first party logistics or 1PL. In other words, 1PL or first party logistics is when a company uses its own vehicles to send or pick up their products. This is the basic or the foundational model and the rest of the other models revolve around it. Few companies these days rely on such a model because as I said in the beginning of my lecture that outsourcing improves flexibility of a firm. Let's move on to 2PL. What is 2PL? Again, consider yourself a manufacturer. As discussed, when you are producing or manufacturing something, you need to have a transportation or deliver the goods to your customer or a retailer. Some manufacturers might need a warehouse too to store the goods. 2PL or the second party logistics model is the one in which manufacturer outsources a transportation and warehouse function to a subcontractor for the execution. Just remember that 2PL is all about outsourcing transportation and warehousing to some other entity that can be a third party entity. In addition to this, 2PL service providers generally provide their own logistics resources like trucks, forklifts, warehouses, etc. etc. From, for transportation and handling of goods. Let's move on to 3PL. What is 3PL? 3PL stands for third party logistics. The term third party logistics is often used interchangeably with order fulfillment as well. 
In a third party logistics model, manufacturer outsources an item or package for transportation and associated acti logistics activities to a third party logistics provider. Same functions are somewhat outsourced in 2PL as well, but 3PL typically specializes in the integrated operations of warehousing and the associated transportation services that can be scaled and customized to meet customer specific requirements. Here I would want my viewers to memorize this model by retaining two keywords that are integrated operations and customized services to meet customers specific demand. Most 3PL companies own or lease warehouse space which they provide to their clients. They generally don't own their own fleet of trucks but they have a contract with other carriers for freight and shipping services. The logistics solution that 3PL offers includes receiving, storing, packing, and shipping services. Some 3PL companies also provide other logistics services referred to as value-added services. These include inventory management, kitting and assembly, postponement packaging, cross-docking, product returns, customs brokerage, etc. etc. So if you are a manufacturer and you want the logistics operator to render customized services for you like these, then 3PL is the right model for you. The client often enters into a long term strategic partnership with the 3PL logistics provider in a cooperative environment. Let's discuss some pros and cons of 3PL. 3PLs have many benefits over the categories of logistics. The benefits include logistics expertise used rather than in-house workers, easier technological adoption and flexibility in location, offers, resources and workforce. Furthermore, utilizing a 3PL can be cost effective and has the fastest add-on possibilities for brands that have high turnover or higher than normal attrition rates. While 3PL has its benefits, it has also drawbacks companies will lose control over the shipping and logistics operations of their business. Outsourcing this division of your business means you are under the operations of your 3PL and hand them the ability to meet the accuracy of orders, lead time and transportation logistics. Now let's some, uh, discuss some uh, key differences between 2PL and 3PL. I believe that these differences will definitely clear any ambiguities and confusions in your mind and they will give you more insight uh, about 3PL. So let's move. The most significant difference between a second party logistics provider and a third party logistics provider is the fact that a 3PL provider is always integrated into the customer's system. The 2PL is not integrated in contrast to the 3PL. 2PL is only an outsourced logistics provider with no system integration at all. A 2PL works often on call that is express parcel services whereas a 3PL is informed about the workload of the near future and there is usually a contract in place. Another point of difference between a 2PL and 3PL is the specification and customizing of services. A 2PL normally only provides standardized services, whereas 3PLs often provide services that are customized and specialized to the need of their customer. This is possible due to long term contracts that are usual in the third party logistics market. Cost effectiveness of a third party logistics provider is only given over longer period of time with stable contracts and predictable margins. In contrast to that of a second party logistics service provider that is unable or unwilling to do any meaningful level of customization. All processes are standardized and there is no room for the tailoring of service or processes for the client organization. Now let's move on to 4PL. What is 4PL? 4PL or 4 party, party logistics provider is one step above 3PL service providers and oversee the entire supply chain of their clients. 4PL providers are contacted when a manufacturer or client wants an external company to take care of every aspect of the logistics journey. How do they work? A 4PL company has partnerships with several established 2PLs or 3PL companies which 4PL service provider strategically manages alone without a client input. 
let's say you are a big manufacturer and you don't want to get into the hassle of managing and coordinating with three pl service providers or you can say you want a one window operation to cater to all your needs of logistics warehousing and other associated services then four pl service providers come into play services offered by a 4pl include everything provided by a 3pl plus they offer project management sourcing and negotiation logistics strategy and analytics impartial service advice a single point of contact fourth party logistics services providers often have no means of transportation and warehouses their role demands intense involvement in the client's business activities in order to provide an ideal or most optimum solution, fourth party logistics provider must have an excellent knowledge of the entire field of the logistics industry as well as good IT infrastructure. Now let's discuss some key differences between 3PL and 4PL. The 4PL organization is often a separate entity formed by a joint venture or other long term contract between a client and one more partner. The 4PL organization is a single point of contact and it acts as an interface between the client and multiple logistics service providers, whereas in 3PL, client has to engage with the logistics service provider to get the job done. Almost all the aspects of a client's supply chain are managed by the 4PL organization. Now let's move on to 5PL, fifth party logistics. Whenever you see or hear the word 5PL, I would advise you to immediately connect it with keywords like optimization, information technology, automation, e-commerce, supply chain visibility, and etc, etc. So what is 5PL basically? When various supply chains become an interconnected supply network, 5PL enters the game. 5PL providers improve and optimize the efficiency of each part of the supply chain network, usually integrating technology or e-business aspects to automate processes such as an e-commerce platform. In other words, 5PL providers take over the entire supply chain management process of a company. They plan, organize and implement. They look for ways to optimize. They basically serve as a full-scale in-house logistics team for their clients. They have a small but major difference that, that help them uh, stand out from 3PL and 4PL providers and that is technology and big data. 5PL providers take logistics into the digital age using software, technology and automation to improve processes across multiple supply chains. 5PL providers who do not own their uh, own logistics assets take the entire supply chain network into consideration, providing a level of efficiency that online businesses have begun to really value. By tracking and analyzing a variety of data sets, 5PL providers can make more informed decisions that optimize the entire logistics operation of their partnering companies. I hope my viewers must have understood the meanings and the functions of 1PL, 2PL and onwards. In the end, I would like to conclude my discussion by saying that in supply chain, each logistics party has a function to perform. For local distribution of commodities, 1PL to 3PL may be sufficient. Since cross-border shipping is significantly more complicated than a, than a local market, 3PL to 5PL providers may be preferred for international shipping. The idea behind any of the logistics categories mentioned and discussed today is that you and the business can choose which model will work for your brand, how much or how little control you would like to outsource. Viewers, if you find value in this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and pressing the bell icon. Thank you.